Hi there folks. Today we are going to be talking about Lewis dot structures. But before we get there, we need to make sure that we have a couple of definitions down for a single bond, double bond, and triple bond. If you remember, a single bond is a bond between two atoms where one pair of electrons are shared. So that would be an example of hydrogen bonding to hydrogen, which we can also draw just as a line between them. We had oxygen. Oxygen actually shares a total of four electrons. That's a double bond. We can draw it this way. Or we could draw it as two lines between the two oxygen atoms. And that would be perfectly acceptable as well. And you'll see me do it both ways. Nitrogen, triple bonds to nitrogen. So that means there are six electrons in between the two nitrogens. And we call that a triple bond. Okay, just make sure you got that. We talked about that in previous podcast. Make sure you understand that. All right, so we have Lewis dot structures. They're simple enough. So why do we use them? Well, there are actually a bunch of reasons we use them. The first is that almost everything that we see out there in nature, well, not everything, but so many things are covalently bonded. So that's a reason why we want to use Lewis dot structures, because they help explain how things are covalently bonded. Specifically, what they allow us to do is they allow us to do things like predict. Ooh, there's that word again that we've talked about in the past. Predictive. How important it is to be able to predict the future. It can predict how many bonds we will make. Okay, so the number of bonds that something will make. And what you're going to see in the next podcast, not this one, is it allows you to predict the shapes of the molecules which is really cool. And that's going to, that's not this podcast, but that's the next one. And it allows you to predict the number of shared electrons. And also, of course, then the unshared electrons that are around each atom. So all of that is important. And that's all stuff that we can do because we use Lewis dot structures. Now, you already know this, or you should already know this from previous classes, but I want to go over it again. If you have the molecular formula for a compound, it tells you how many atoms are in a single molecule of the compound. Remember, we're talking about covalent molecules here. So if we take talk, for example, for O2, that tells us we have two oxygen atoms. CO2 tells us we have one carbon and two oxygens. Sucrose, which is table sugar, that white stuff, you've got 12 carbons, and you've got 22 hydrogens, and you've got 11 oxygens. Okay. And similarly for glucose, you've got six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens. You should know that by now. All right, but I just wanted to go over that just because that will help us um, in the future as we go on. All right? Now, remember the octet rule. Atoms tend to gain, lose, or share electrons in order to obtain uh, a full set of valence electrons. In other words, to get the configuration, the electron configuration of a noble gas. And again, with covalent molecules, covalent bonds, we are talking about sharing. All right, so here's some examples. Electrons that are alone, they're lonely, and they want to reach out to other lonely electrons. And almost always this works in pairs, and for what we're doing, we're always going to have it working in pairs. Right? So, for example, for F2, we get F, and we have two electrons in the middle that are shared. Oxygen and nitrogen, we just showed those on the previous screen, so I'm not going to write them again. Okay? So, they work in pairs. So, if you have oxygen, remember oxygen started out with um, six electrons around it. These guys are lonely. So, they're going to go out and try and find someone. So, they're going to find another oxygen, which is over here. And these electrons here are going to bond. And these electrons here, because they're lonely, are going to bond. Okay, just kind of bringing all that back in your head. All right, we've got a few more definitions. Some of them you know, some you don't. The Lewis structure is a structure in which atomic symbols represent valence electrons. So we're going to do the atomic symbols, and we're going to put the little dots around them, and that is going to be our Lewis structure. We have unshared pairs of electrons. So let's look, for example, at, oh, let's do chlorine to chlorine. Chlorine to chlorine, and chlorine has a total of seven valence electrons around it. Ah, stop it. All right, these guys down here, these are what we call unshared, because they're not shared with anybody, unshared pairs.
pairs of electrons. Now the ones in the middle, these are clearly called shared pairs of electrons because these are shared. Okay, Those are shared, and this guy is an unshared pair. Okay, So if they're shared between two atoms, they're clearly shared, otherwise they're unshared. Okay, That's pretty easy. All right, guys, pause the video, write this down. You're going to need to know these, and I'll be going over them over and over throughout uh, every example that we do. So pause the video, write them down. All right, let's go through them together. Um, the first rule is you count all of the valence electrons when you're doing a Lewis structure. So you count the total electrons, and then you place one bond for each connection. So um, we'll actually do this. We then distribute extra electrons on the outside atoms in pairs to fulfill the octet rule, remembering that hydrogen only gets two if it happens to be on the outside. Place the extra electrons on the central atom, and then redistribute the electrons by making double or triple bonds to fulfill the octet rule. Again, you'll see this in examples, and then you should be able to do it. All right. So when you see H2O, the first thing is, how do you decide what goes in the center? We were talking about the central atom. All right, well, there are a couple of ways to do this. Again, I suggest you write these down. Pause the video and write them down. The atom that there's only one of is going to be your central atom. Now, in this case up here, that means it's going to be oxygen. Usually, the first atom is the central atom, except in the case of water, where hydrogen comes first. In fact, where hydrogen comes first on anything, it's not the central atom. Okay, so uh, it's the thing you have one of. The element that's closest to the carbon group, so if you think of your periodic table, I'm not going to do a great job of drawing your periodic table here, right? but if you think of your periodic table, the thing that's closest to the carbon group, the thing that's closest to group 4, is the thing that's going to be central. So if you have something in group 1, that's not close to group 4. But if you've got something in group Five, that's right next to group 4, so that's the one that you would choose. Unless you had something in group 4, in which case, that's always the central atom. Okay, So, those are your kindest rules. The element that has the highest charge, so if you have something with a minus 3, that's really close to a minus 4. So, you look at the absolute value, so you'd use that. That's another way to do it. Okay, so let's actually do H2O. So, if I look at H, H has what I'm... The, okay. Sorry, my first step is to count the total number of valence electrons. Well, every hydrogen has one valence electron. And every oxygen has six valence electrons. But I have two hydrogens, so that means I've got a total of two there. right? So I've got a total of eight, eight electrons if I add all these together. So that's step one. Now, I have to know that oxygen is going to be my central atom because it's the one that there's only one of. Or it's the one that it takes on a minus two charge where hydrogen takes on a plus one. Oxygen has the bigger number. Oxygen is closer to carbon because oxygen is in group six and carbon is in group four, whereas so it's only two away, whereas hydrogen is in group one, so that's three away. All right, so oxygen is my central atom. So what do I do? Well, I place one bond for each connection. So I'm going to write it this way. Right? And I'm also just going to do it down here with valence electrons. Just remember that every bond, each one of these lines that we draw, means this line right here means two atoms. It means a shared pair. Uh, there's that definition from a moment ago. Two atoms. Two, sorry, those are electrons. Two electrons. That each, uh, each of these lines simply means two electrons. Right, so I put my hydrogens out there, because I've got two of them. Right, And then what do I do? It says, distribute extra elect electrons on the outside atoms in pairs. We would do that, except hydrogen only takes two electrons. Those two electrons we've already accounted for, so we can't put any more electrons on the outside. Okay. So then you place any extra electrons. Well, we've placed four electrons so far. We have to place a total of eight, so we need two more here and two more there. That's a total of eight electrons. Then we go and distrib redistribute the electrons to make the octet rule work. Well, let's look at oxygen. Oxygen has two electrons there, two electrons at the bottom, two electrons in that bond, 
and two electrons in that bond. So oxygen is perfectly happy. We are done. Okay. So similarly over here, I would just put two electrons there, two electrons there. Oxygen clearly, if you look at this, has eight electrons, and each of the hydrogens has two. Remember, hydrogen is an exception. It only takes two. Okay. All right. Let's look at NF3. This is probably a better example. All right. Nitrogen is in, well, you, let's stop. Count the total number of valence electrons. Pause the video. You do it. Tell me what they are. All right. Well, nitrogen, if we look at nitrogen, nitrogen is in group 5, so it has 5 valence electrons. And fluorine is in group 7. But there are 3 of them. There are 3 fluorine, so that makes 21. So 21 plus 5 is equal to 26 electrons. So that's what I have to do. So now, what's my central atom? Pause the video, figure that out. All right, the central atom should be nitrogen. Why is that? Well, there's only one of them. It's the thing that comes first. It is the one that's closer to carbon, because it takes on a charge typically of minus 3, whereas carbon takes on plus or minus 4. So it's only one away. Fluorine is in group 7, which is 3 away. It takes on a charge, excuse me, of minus 1. Okay, so now what do we do? We have a total of 26 electrons. Now we have to make a bond for each of the fluorines. Now, again, I'm going to draw these as lines just because I'm sick of drawing little dots. Right? And here's fluorine over here. And here's fluorine over here. And here's fluorine over there. Why are there three of them? Because it says there are three of them. Okay? So that's a total of two, four, six electrons. And I need a total of 26. Now, remember, the third rule says I distribute extra electrons on the outside atoms in pairs. So I'm going to say there's one pair. There's two pairs, and there's three pairs. So I have the three bonds, which give me six electrons, and the other um, electrons out there, which is six more, that's 12, but I need 26. All right, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. So I'm up to 24, and everybody has eight. Each one of my fluorines has eight, uh, but I have 26 electrons. So now I have to put the extra ones, according to rule number four, on the central atom. So now I put in 26 electrons. Okay? And I have to redistribute the electrons to make the octet rule work. Well, I've got eight electrons on this fluorine. I've got eight electrons on this fluorine. I've got eight electrons on this fluorine, and I have eight electrons on nitrogen. Everybody is happy. I am done. Right? I don't have to do any more. All right, what happens in CCL4? Again, I'll pause the video. You need to pause the video. Figure out, go through your five rules, and see if you can do this on your own. Okay, rule number one says count the total number of electrons. Well, carbon has four, and each of the chlorines has seven. But there are four of them. That's 28. Plus 4 is going to be 32, so I have 32 electrons to worry about. Now, right, what's my central atom? It has to be carbon. And I have 4 chlorines, so I have to put 4 lines out here for the 4 chlorines. So I have to put a chlorine in each place. And I have 32 electrons. I've already taken care of 2, 4, 6, 8 of them. So now I go 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32. Now that I've put in all my 32 electrons, I have to put any extra ones. Well, I don't have any extra ones, so I can ignore that. And then the next thing I do is I redistribute to make sure that everybody has 8 valence electrons. And if you look at everything, everything has 8 valence electrons, so we are done. All right. SO2 is not going to be so pretty. All right, so what? So the first thing I do is I have to pick my central atom, and I have to count how many valence electrons I have. So you go ahead and do that. All right, well, sulfur has six. Oxygen has six, but there are two oxygens. I have to multiply by two, so that's 12, so I have a total of 18 electrons. All right, my central atom, yep, sulfur, and I have to connect to my two oxygens. Okay? Alright, 
So now I've done four electrons so far. So I have to distribute my electrons to my outer atoms. So I have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. So I'm done on the outside. I have two extra electrons. I distribute them in the middle. Okay? So I say, well, I'm done. Well, no, I'm not. I put in 18 electrons, but you'll notice all the oxygens have eight, but the sulfur only has six. So what I have to do is I have to take a pair of electrons away. It can be a pair from oxygen. It can be a pair from oxygen on the right. It doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these electrons away, and I'm going to put them in here. I'm going to put them in as a bond. So now let's look at this oxygen. This oxygen here has eight electrons around it. I've got two, four, six, and then I've got the bond for eight. Let's look at sulfur. Sulfur has these two over here on the left, and then two on the bottom, and then it has four up here in this double bond. So this sulfur has two plus two plus four, which is eight. And how about this carbon? I'm sorry, this oxygen. It has two here, two here, plus Again, four more in the middle, that's a total of eight. Everybody is now happy, so the way I would draw this is exactly what I have here. O, going to O on the other side. Now, could we just as easily have attacked this, um, this pair of electrons over here? Yes, it doesn't matter, they'd be mirror images of each other. Okay, so it doesn't matter whether you hit the left one or the right one, you'd have mirror images. All right, how about N2? Go ahead and give it a shot, see if you can do it. All right, N is in group 5, but there are two of them, so that's a total of 10. So what I do is I come up with nitrogen here, and I put a bond to another nitrogen. Now notice what's your central atom. Well, there isn't really one. Um, you just have to have nitrogen bonded to nitrogen. Okay. So I have a total of two electrons. There are four. There are six, there are eight, there are ten. Okay, we're done putting in our electrons. Sorry, that's times two plus ten. Okay, so we say, well, this nitrogen on the left only has six electrons. So if I take this pair of electrons and take it away and turn it into a bond, that would give this nitrogen over here eight electrons, which is great. The nitrogen on the left still only has six. If I take those two electrons away and make it a bond, you'll notice that this nitrogen on the left now has two electrons over here, and it has six electrons from the middle. And the nitrogen on the right has six electrons in the middle, plus two on the outside, giving it a total of eight. So nitrogen is now happy and satisfied. All right, this is the last one. I'd like you to try NO3, but let me warn you about NO3. Notice it has a minus sign up here. All right, so once you figure out the total number of electrons that you have, because this has a negative charge, you're going to have to add one. So first thing I'd like you to do on your own is see if you can calculate how many electrons there are here. Pause the video, see if you can do it. OK, nitrogen has five. Oxygen has six, but there are three oxygens that's going to be 18. Because I have a negative charge, I have to add one more. So I have 18 plus 5, which is 23, plus 1, makes a total of 24. Okay? Now, let's go ahead and, and go through, now you just go through your normal process. You've got 24 electrons. Go ahead and do it on your own. See what you can do from here. Okay. Your central atom clearly is nitrogen, because there's only one of them. It bonds to three oxygens. And there are 24 electrons to worry about. Well, I've already taken care of six. Eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. Oops, I have a problem. I put all my electrons in, and all my oxygens are happy, but I have a problem with nitrogen because nitrogen only has six. So I'm going to take, I'm going to take this pair of electrons away. I'm going to put it 
in there. Okay. So now I have a double bonded nitrogen to oxygen because now nitrogen is okay. It has eight electrons. This oxygen down here still has eight electrons. Now, can I pick one of the other oxygens? Sure, it doesn't matter. So this is my Lewis dot diagram for NO3. However, it does have a minus sign. So to indicate that, I'll put square braces around this entire thing and stick a minus sign up there, which says this is an NO3 ion and it has a negative charge. All right, go ahead and start working on the worksheet. If you have questions, please see me in class. You should be able to do this now. All right, let me summarize. The summary is real simple. The summary is you should be able to draw Lewis dot structures for simple molecules and or ions. So go ahead and give the, the sheet a try and ask me questions if you have them. Go back and watch the podcast again if you need to. Okay? We'll see you later. Have a good one.